long represented as knuckle-dragging brutes, recent research has begun to establish an image of Neanderthals as intellectual humans who created art, played the flute, buried their dead, and wore feathers and eagle talons. Indeed, the brains of Neanderthals and early Homo sapiens were very similar in volume, roughly 90 cubic inches. But that doesn't imply they were equal. Nevertheless, one tangible fact is that wherever Homo sapiens migrated, they essentially outcompeted other human species in hunting prowess. Some scientists deny the claim that Neanderthals practiced art, and there are few examples, including one discovered in the back of Gorham's cave in Gibraltar. However, did Neanderthals' relative lack of artistic abilities contribute to their extinction? According to new study, while the dubious artistic prowess of our prehistoric cousins may not appear to be insignificant, new research has discovered that it is directly tied to their less advanced hunting ability, which may eventually explain why they went extinct. So, what caused the difference in abilities between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals? There is almost minimal evidence for Neanderthal art, and the few disputed specimens are mostly primitive straight lines with no identifiable images. Scientists now believe this simplicity is linked to a lack of hand-eye coordination as a result of their diet of slow-moving prey. According to the globularization hypothesis, the same visuomotor coordination and brain structure and function that allowed Homo sapiens to precisely hurl a hunting spear also enabled them to create lifelike cave drawings. The link between spear-throwing accuracy and realistic drawing abilities may help explain how the modern human brain got more globe-shaped and why modern humans were better hunters than Neanderthals. Neanderthals used thrusting spears to hunt karma species in Eurasia, whereas Homo sapiens, or modern humans, spent hundreds of thousands of years spear-hunting wary and dangerous game on Africa's vast grasslands, resulting in the evolution of visuomotor coordination, according to the report. According to researchers, the mental faculties that allow a modern human to imagine the arc of a spear are the same, or extremely comparable, to those required for cave painting. Neanderthals could mentally imagine previously seen creatures from working memory, but they struggled to transfer those mental impressions into the coordinated hand movement patterns required for drawing. Moreover, Neanderthals lacked the globular brain shape and hand-eye coordination required to create images like the prehistoric cave drawing of lions by Paleolithic Homo sapiens. For more than 500,000 years, early Homo sapiens hunted with throwing spears in sub-Saharan Africa, causing their increasingly vigilant prey to develop improved flight or fight survival methods. An evolutionary arms race with increasingly wary prey resulted in Homo sapiens developing globular skulls and larger parietal cortexes, the part of the brain that integrates visual imagery and motor coordination. But Ice Age conditions most likely allowed Neanderthals to consistently hunting cold-adapted wildlife, making game more approachable for close-range hunting with thrusting spears. In fact, many of the species hunted by Neanderthals, such as horses and cattle, were later tamed, indicating the species' historical lack of wariness. The gradual evolution of modern human brain shape appears to parallel the gradual emergence of behavioral modernity as evidenced by the archaeological record. Another study titled Reconstructing the Neanderthal Brain, using computational anatomy published in the journal Scientific Reports, found that early Homo sapiens had larger cerebellar hemispheres than Neanderthals. The diverse team of experts hypothesizes that the demise of Neanderthals and the expansion of Homo sapiens are linked to cerebellar size. For the most recent study on cerebellar volume, an international team of researchers employed cutting-edge computational neuroanatomy to reconstruct 3D maps of the complete brain from three cohorts, Neanderthals, early Homo sapiens, and modern humans. They discovered that Neanderthals have much smaller cerebellar hemispheres than Homo sapiens, especially on the right side. Such a neuroanatomical divergence in the cerebellum could have resulted in significant variations in cognitive and social abilities between the two species, thus contributing to the replacement of Neanderthals by early Homo sapiens. Interestingly, when the researchers set out to reconstruct these ancient brains using computational anatomy, 
They expected to discover that early Homo sapiens had larger frontal lobes in the cerebrum, which is thought to be the seat of higher order cognitive abilities. However, the brain volume in the frontal lobes of Neanderthals and early Homo sapiens was virtually identical. On the other hand, the cerebellar hemispheres, which are neatly nestled beneath the cerebrum's left-right axis, were significantly smaller in Neanderthals. The study goes on to say that, because of severe natural selection on archaic and anatomically modern humans for effective hunting, the parietal cortex, which combines visual imagery and motor coordination, enlarged gradually, resulting in the globular form of the modern human cranium, which is not seen in Neanderthals. To demonstrate how the cognitive properties used for throwing spears and cave drawings are similar, upper Paleolithic drawings of animals in Chauvet Cave, France, are discussed in the context of how these artists engaged in both overt attention to guide their hand movements and covert attention to their mental images during the drawing process. The visual imagery used in drawing regulates arm movements in a similar way that hunters visualize the arc their spears must make to hit their animal targets. Prehistoric cave drawings were most likely used as a teaching tool to pass on valuable knowledge between generations of early modern humans. Hand drawing improves observing abilities, therefore these drawings could have been valuable for conceiving hunts, measuring game attentiveness, picking susceptible body parts as targets, and developing community cohesiveness through spiritual ceremonies. As a result, the introduction of cave art may have paved the way for cultural shifts. In fact, the ability to communicate mental images with group members has huge ramifications. According to new research titled The Evolution of Modern Human Brain Shape, published in the journal Scientific Advances, modern human brains are substantially more globe-shaped than our evolutionarily extinct Neanderthal counterparts, who had a longer brain case. The findings support previous research that has revealed particular genetic variations associated with evolutionary brain development after the population split between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens. The researchers believe that our modern brain shape evolved gradually within the Homo sapiens lineage, reaching its current globularity around 100,000 to 35,000 years ago. Indeed, in early human life, the cerebellum and parietal lobes bulged, causing the entire brain to globularize. The important lesson from this paper is that the bulging of the cerebellum and parietal lobes is essential to the growth and globularization of our modern brain. Meanwhile, Neanderthals had a smaller brain capacity in their cerebellums than early Homo sapiens. Therefore, more cerebellar volume in both the left and right hemispheres may have contributed to Homo sapiens' evolutionary success in comparison to Neanderthals. Parietal regions play a role in orientation, attention, stimulus perception, sensorimotor transformations that underpin planning, visuospatial integration, imaging, self-awareness, working and long-term memory, numerical processing and tool use. Furthermore, Parietal bulging in modern humans has been associated to significant shape diversity in an important hub of brain organization, therefore its enlargement in Homo sapiens is associated with cognitive specialties. Regarding the cerebellar development and function, the cerebellum is involved not only in motor processes like as movement coordination and balance, but also in spatial processing, working memory, language, social cognition and affective processing. Although it is unclear exactly how and when our globe-shaped brains arose, globularity appears to occur during a prenatal and early postnatal era of fast brain expansion. Furthermore, the history of Homo sapiens endocranial morphology reveals evolutionary alterations in early brain development, which is crucial for neural wiring and cognitive development. As a result, researchers hypothesize that evolutionary changes in early brain development were directly related to the emergence of human intellect. But what about the archaeological evidence that Neanderthals engaged in cultural practices such as burying their dead and drawing pictures on cave walls? Should Neanderthals be classified as a subspecies of Homo sapiens? As discussed, there is ample evidence that Neanderthals were intellectual and capable of changing their surroundings in a variety of ways. Neanderthals practiced symbolic culture burying their dead and decorating caves with rock formations. 
There is also evidence that they travelled by water, utilised toothpicks, manufactured jewellery, and played the flute. As interesting as that is, this should be disregarded from species categorization, since behaviours have the potential to be more fluid, change faster, and spread more easily within and between species than features based on anatomy and DNA, according to some anthropologists. In comparison to modern human standards, the evidence for Neanderthal modernity, symbolic behaviour, and art creation has always been set exceptionally high. The idea that we might be the only species capable of transferring our ideas onto a two-dimensional space led us to consider this as a potential difference in cognitive and possibly even physical abilities between Neanderthals and modern humans. Not all researchers are comfortable rethinking that paradigm, especially since all of the evidence must be interpreted second-hand. Neanderthal cave paintings are primarily abstract, there is currently no evidence that Neanderthals painted images of lions and other animals as modern humans did thousands of years later. Nevertheless, a lack of animal imagery does not necessarily indicate a mental deficiency in Neanderthals. It could simply represent a cultural preference. It's possible that they had a different belief system and didn't consider animals important enough to depict in deep caves. If you have to prepare your pigment and travel deep into a dark cave to paint a red line, it is as meaningful as someone painting a bison or lion. And with that tantalizing statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. Until next time, stay curious and stay questioning. Also, please subscribe, share and explore our channel's other highly compelling videos. Thank you and take care.